Port Leeds tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, with a higher BAC than your ABV, Greg, Scott, and Dan. Welcome in, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along. We are the Unfiltered Gentleman. I am Greg, or that's Scott. Welcome. And that's Dan. Welcome. <laughs> all right. We're so welcoming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're all welcome. Yes. Welcome to the show. Uh, like I said, thanks for listening. And thanks to, uh, this is a new one, the city of Calabasas. No shit. That's wow. local out here wow. in Southern California. They were our top listening city for last week. Hmm. I've never even seen them hit the charts before. And I, yeah, well, all of a sudden they popped up to the top. Somebody must have had a uh, unfiltered gentleman listening party or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All their friends went home and downloaded afterwards or something mm-hmm. like that. That's the thing to do now. It is. Uh-huh. <laughs> have an unfiltered gentleman listening party. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Get all your friends together after yeah. work and everything. Right, yeah. Have a couple beers on hand. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, uh, maybe they're... Participating in their own tournament, the March Madness yeah. tournament. Yep. You never know. That's uh, what the kids are doing. It is. Who needs drugs? Who needs the weed these That's days? Right. <laughs> We're your drug kids. Yeah. Wait, kids don't listen to the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, thanks, Calabasas, for listening along. Uh, Burp Word of the Week is defense. Oh, shit. Hmm. Defense. Of course, these are all basketball team because we are in the middle of our March Madness hazy IP. With IP defense tournament. got to do with basketball. Yeah. <laughs> At least pro basketball. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll get to that in sports talk, but uh, I was somewhat inspired by Dan's latest. Oh, oh, me too. Cleaning up the oh, glass. Thank you that, was, that was a great article that uh, 100% expressed my feelings on basketball. Thank these you. Days. I think, yeah, I think it spoke for a lot of people. Yeah, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers and uh, rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, or wherever you like to uh, get your podcast from. If you give us a little review on there, it helps the algorithms. People find us, we get more famous, and we can afford more beer. That's how it works. Uh, all right, I alluded to it. Let's not waste any more time. I think we're all <laughs> needing some hydration over here. Uh, your quarter's ready. <laughs> Get your quarter's ready. It's going to cost like five bucks. Because <laughs> it's time for the 2019 March Madness Hazy IPA Tournament. He's heated up. <laughs> I really should pull some sound clips from that game. <laughs> That's the best game. Yes. Dan and I have played it quite drunk before. That's right. We were we'll so drunk. Right. <laughs> we were so drunk it took us like an hour to hook it up. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty sloppy. Oh my god. I think that must have been the drunkest it took me to hook something up like yeah, that. It was yeah. uh it was a process. Mm-hmm. I think we ended up having to get the lady friend to like help oh, plug man. things <laughs> in and I don't even know how we played it. It was that a mess. Point. You have a hard and, enough time sober, right? Right. <laughs> Anyways, on to the tournament. Today, this is the start of round two. Uh, we have two beers in front. I'll tell you a little more about the tournament when these guys, as these guys try. But uh, in front of you, as always, you have an A cup and a B cup. They are labeled with my very fancy Sharpie. Go ahead and grab A. No D cup, huh? No D- oh, man. <laughs> I'll grab D. Uh, no D cup. I am sorry. Just A and B. So while these guys are doing the science end of things and checking out the beers in front of them, I'll tell you. That game one of round one was Sam Adams, New England IPA, sixth place versus third place, Modern Times, Orderville. Uh, Orderville moved on in that game. Then the next game was, uh, and this is also round one, Bay Republic's Through the Haze took on Firestone Walker's Mind Haze. That was number four and five. Uh, Number four, Firestone Walker Mind Haze moved on. Uh, They are up against Sierra Nevada's Hazy Little Thing, which took first in the uh, scoring of the bracket. And then today we are taking Modern Times Orderville against the number two seed, which I'll tell you about in just a minute here. Have you gentlemen come up with a winner as of yet? Yes. It was a yeah, tough contest. Was the defense strong? Definitely. Definitely. Good, good. Came, came down to the buzzer. Uh-huh. But I think uh, B kind of, they ran out of timeouts and they pulled the Chris Weber. Mm. Yeah, and they, they just called one more extra and they, they didn't have it. So uh, <laughs> a, a got to shoot the extra free throws and they won. At least they didn't J.R. Smith it. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, true. They could have done that. Somebody uh, just did that, right? J.R. Pro- Smith. Oh, oh, in the, the pros, timeout just, thing? Yeah, within the last few days. Again? Oh, really? I can't oh, think I of who know. it was. Yeah, I, somebody did that just the last few days. Oh, man. Not surprised. Yeah. But right. uh, I'm, I'm going to go with A. And Dan, you also went with A? Yes. Wow. All right. So B 
was Orderville. Ooh. That means moving on to the finals of the bracket is A, New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger wow. Juicy A. Oh, oh my goodness. That's the one I don't think I've ever had before yeah. today. I'll Damn tell you a little bit about it. It's 7.5%. It is 42 IBUs. Has a 3.79 on Untapped and a 3.9 on Beer Advocate. Uh, it says packed with bright tropical aromas and brilliant citrusy flavors. This unfiltered IPA wraps up with a pleasantly smooth finish. Did you guys find it to be pleasantly smooth? Yes, very. I did. Yes. Yeah, I kind of felt like it was funny. I was like judging it this time, and I kind of felt like this is what a hazy should taste like. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I and I saw you pouring them beers too, and I was trying to forget. Don't hey, put it out of your mouth, Dan. Hey, put it out of your mind, Dan. Right. Put it out of your mouth. It's disgusting. <laughs> um, That's what she said. Because. Uh, that's a beer that I would always get at um, my local Red Robin over here when I go get a, a burger. Oh, the Voodoo Ranger. Yeah, it juicy? was like the only one they really had um, that was uh, craft. Okay, so I'd, I'd always get the Voodoo Ranger. So I kind of got stuck on that for a while. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man, I don't know. I was like, it just came back. I was like, man, I really like this beer, dude. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's definitely the juicier of the two beers. Yeah, more of that uh, haze style. Uh, the Orderville, I'd say, has a little more malt to it. It's also a little cleaner, a little, a little more West Coasty, right? So yeah, good choice. So New Belgium Voodoo Ranger uh, Juicy Haze is moving on. Let me pull up my bracket here. Uh, so that means they will face the winner of next week's Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Ooh, Thing boy. and Firestone Walker Mind Ooh, Haze. Good luck. I think this uh, Mind Haze and Hazy Little Thing is going to be a really tough game. Yes, a lot of people on social media are calling uh, Mind Haze to take the whole tournament. Really? Yes. So we'll see how they fare against Sierra Nevada, and oh, then man. and then which one of those will move on to take on uh, New Belgium? Yeah, for the championships. Mm-hmm. Good important work, everybody. Yes, indeed. We are doing important work over here. That's right. Yes. Uh, all right. Make sure you keep up with our tournament and our brackets. You can find the bracket at theunfilteredgentleman dot com. Just click on bracket, and it's always updated there, so you can find out where we are. If you've lost your way, uh, don't lose your way. All right. Uh, enough with that. Let's move on to some crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Let's see. Um, hmm. I don't think I have any grievances. I will say that uh, Frilling, Frilling's Fest, Frilling Fest is April 13th at Integrant Brewing. That's out here in Southern California, uh, Moore Park, California. We had a live show there just about a year ago. Uh, oh, yeah. Dan and I were there with Brittany, Chris, and John, and then in October... God. We were there for Oktoberfest. We had a booth. We had some games. We had our Alpine photo booth. We, uh, you could come and record your favorite drunk story. And we had some giveaways and swag and all that stuff. Anyways, just talking to John Bird over at Integrin, and uh, they want us back there. We're going to have a booth again. We're going to bring back all the same uh, fun stuff like uh, the Alpine photo booth and, and uh, some games. And we had little uh, bottle cap cornhole. Dude, some kid came up. and you just It's kind of like cornhole. You bounce the bottle caps. There's like a small cornhole shaped mm-hmm. board. You got to get in the hole or whatever. Some little kid was there with his dad, like came up and was just knocking him down. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, bro, you got to take your kid to the bar and start yeah, playing some quarters. Kid's, yeah. The kid's been doing some drinking. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. He was killing everybody. So, a monster. Yeah. So, we had some fun games. We're going to bring all that stuff back and we're going to have some new stuff. We're going to have uh, some shirts for sale, some uh, drink local shirts and, and stay hydrated and that kind of stuff. So, make sure you come check us out April 13th at Enegrin. Uh, it's from 11 to 5 is when we'll be there. The whole. The thing goes on all day from like 11 to, I think, 10 or 11 p.m. So come hang out with us. Go get a lot of beer. They'll be tapping some special beers, and there'll be uh, German bands and German food and, and all that fun stuff. And really good beer. I got to oh, yeah. say, yeah, like a year ago we did that. That's still probably my favorite interview that we've done, mm-hmm. only because, like, I don't know, man. Like, I could just see how much they really cared about that beer. Like, it just exuded out of, like, everything they said. And Yeah, to be quite honest, they spend way too much time making it. Yeah, Like, no they do kidding. it the right, in the old way, you know, and they yeah. do, like, uh, decoction brewing and all this stuff. Yeah, and and it's beautiful like, glasses to put the beer in. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's it's just classy, classy brewery. I love that place. And I believe it was just about a year ago at Last Frulings Fest where you and I competed in the log song competition. <laughs> I was going to ask you that and got annihilated. Yeah. Oh my god. Got a not- I, The saw broke in my hand. I, oh. I have a valid excuse. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I think later on that night was when we found out your love for jazz. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh my god, dude! You made it very clear to our Uber driver how much you love jazz. Yeah, I told him that was great. I don't remember anything about jazz, but when I get drunk, apparently I'm just <laughs> you're you're the go to guy, the jazz man. Yeah, you should be cleaning up the sax.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. 
who needs sports when you got jazz? That's right. right. Uh, anyway, so yeah, April 13th, come out, hang out with us, have some beers with us, and uh, get some swag and all that good stuff. A week or so ago, I got to go to the Camarillo Beer March. Camarillo is a local city out here. They had a beer march. Uh, Flatfish was there. M Special was there. Uh, geez, who else? There's a lot of uh, lot of local breweries, that, some that we've had on the show. Oh, Nick from 14 Cans was there. Was talking to him for a while. Mm. All kinds of good stuff. Um, had a lot of great beer. Got super hydrated. Like one of those days where like you just know you're gonna get effed up and yeah. And you know it was fun. We had some food early on to kind of coat the layers and, and base up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you just walk around a little downtown Camarillo and and go from shop to shop and. Have a bunch of beer. At one place, uh, there was a, I can't remember the name of the brewery. It's escaping me right now, but it's a veteran-owned brewery, and they donate some of their proceeds to uh, some veteran charities. And the guy there was super cool. We kind of made friends, and they were supposed to stop at like 5 or whatever, and it was like 5.15. I was like, you got any beer left? He's like, yeah, I don't really want to haul it back. And so (laughs) he's like, what do you want? So we're just, we just kept pouring beers, and one of the guys in our group uh, got nice and shwasty and, and fell asleep at the table. Oh, yeah! It was one of those things where, like, you don't want to let him fall asleep because you don't want to get kicked out. I know yeah. it's not a bar, so they're probably less strict about it. But I'm used to being at bars where it's like you fall asleep, like you get kicked the fuck out yeah, immediately. Yeah, game over. Yeah, so we're like trying to wake him up and shit. And uh, yeah, it was, but it was a good time. We all got pretty shwasty and then <laughs> then ate a lot of food afterwards. And uh, thank God for Uber. Yeah, no mm-hmm. kidding. Had to sleep out there that night because that was just, that was nuts. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, after they were cleaning up at the this brewery, whose name is escaping me, I feel like a douche. I uh, I went up and, and I was like, "Hey, man, you want to you want to sell me some beer?" And they're like, "Well, eh, just take some." So I just took it and then oh, wow. uh, because they were nice enough to give it to me, I went and donated to their charity that they supported. There anyways. you go. But uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, you got to give them a shout out. I know the name is escaping me. I will post pictures. I got some beers in the fridge from them. So I'll post some pictures on the social media of the beer and uh, talk about it a little bit. So uh, follow us at the unfil- Unfiltered Gentleman. The Unfiltered yeah. Gentleman. They're getting out free beer out here. Yeah. So they get a free plug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Anybody else? Any grievances or anything? No grievances. Scott's sick. That's a grievance. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> or, or is getting over being sick? Getting over is still like a little congestion, so I probably won't be talking a lot. So the ratings will go sky high. This is going to be our best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just fuck DMV. That's mm. pretty much all I got to say. Fuck the DMV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just I, I had to go twice. I went, first time I went today, and I just fucking got tired because I was standing in line for a half hour and nobody's moving, so I left. You didn't make an appointment? No, I am. I'm going to. Oh, I was going to say. And the, I went to a different one the second time. And it's pretty much just as bad. It's just like, I'm thinking it's a weekday, so we're, right. we're good. Nope. And, well, they have like less know. hours now, yeah. and so it's, it's all just compacted. Yeah, so I told my wife, fuck that. I'll just make an appointment yeah. for next week. And You can't not make an appointment. Yeah. It's I a shit so. show there. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank God for our California government that has that under control now. Yeah. Your tax dollar is hard at work. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lady, you know, it's funny you talk about the DMV. The lady friend was asking me the day. Because we just had some friends get uh, personalized plates, and they're really cool and whatever. She's like, why don't you get personalized plates? Like, you're way too obsessed with your car. And I was like, you know, I would. I think it'd be really fun, but I don't want to give them more of my money. Right. That's the problem. Yeah, Because yeah. it's not just like a one time. I think it's like an annual fee on top of that. It's like, oh, you know, really? 50 bucks to get them, and then another 50 bucks every oh, year or something man. like that. And I was like, I would if I, A, didn't have to pay annually for it, or B, I feel like the money was going to something useful, but... I still run over the same fucking potholes every day. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they can suck a dick. Yep. Yeah, we were trying to come up with ways to fit stay hydrated onto a license plate. (laughs) (laughs) Hydrated just way too long. Like we got to like H-Y-D-R-8. Yeah. H-Y-D-R-8. So that's five. So we got like, what, seven total? Yeah. So it's like, how do we get to stay? We need like eight. Because you do like S-T-Y, then the hydrate. Mm-hmm. And that, but that'd be eight. That'd be one too many. People just put, sty, I wish die hydrated. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you could just put hydrated, I suppose. Yeah, that that could be. Yeah. And I said, what if we do? Because you know the initials of the unfiltered gentleman, of course, tug. So whenever I name like file names and stuff for the show, it's always like tug and then the number or something like that. I was like, what if I just did tug show? She's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't approve that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I might get flagged in the system for tug yeah. show. Something very different. So uh, I'm sure, even if you put hydrated as your license plate, you probably get flagged down every time you go down the, the freeway or whatever. That's true. Would hate CHP. to go. Th- yeah, I'd hate to roll through a checkpoint. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be a nightmare. Hydrated. I was like, I love water. 
<laughs> love water. I always think about that with people who put like their favorite beer, like as a decal on the back of their car. Oh yeah, it's like, dude, you're gonna get pulled over everywhere you go with that thing. On, <laughs> come on, it's like Bud Light. Yeah, it's always trashy beer. It's never yeah. like a big sticker or something good. Yeah, well, at least around where I live, I see 805 a lot. Okay. Like, oh, there is a lot of 805. Yeah, stickers. 805 yeah, beer, true. and it's like, come on, man, yeah. you're gonna get pulled over, dude. Right. Yeah, I love beer. I'm not putting it on my car. Nope. <laughs> no, 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 thank no. you. And it's like, oh, I could put a Lakers sticker or something or a Dodgers. But then you're going to find that one asshole fan that hates the whatever team you put oh, on there is yeah. going to key your car for right. having a sticker. It's yeah. just not worth it. Mm-hmm. So no stickers. So speaking of checkpoint, have you guys heard, uh, you know, the Waze, the navigation thing? Right. They're, the police are getting upset because, I don't know, if, I don't think I mentioned this yet, because, you know, it's a like a Facebook kind of thing. Well, you can, you can mark, like, if there's police present. And if there's checkpoints. People are, like, reporting oh, checkpoints. I didn't so know about checkpoints. That's what I, I was reading an article about I gotta that. I more police often. Police are getting upset about that. How funny. And nothing they can do. Interesting. Yeah. Suck it, police. Yeah. I know that they were already getting mad that people were marking that they were present wherever they were. Yeah. Not checkpoint related. But I, I would imagine if they're mad at that, then be really mad about checking. Oh, damn, boy, that's yeah. pretty cool. I didn't know they did that. I didn't either. I'm thinking about uh, getting the ways there. I know. It's like, Greg, why are you entering the address to the grocery store? It's half a <laughs> mile away. <laughs> Can't be too sure. That's right. <laughs> Can't be too You know, it's funny. This is just spiraling into stories. But uh, my buddy who shoots uh, videos a lot for weddings, uh, we we're looking at wedding venues and we were, I was telling him about one. And he said that he was at this wedding venue where he, he shot there multiple times. The first time he was shooting there, uh, around uh, nine ish o'clock, they come over, and it's an outdoor venue. They come over. The DJ speakers are like, "Hey, just want to let everybody know that there is a checkpoint down the street, so make sure Ooh. you guys are like careful, and and uh, you might want to stop drinking if you've had too much." Blah blah blah. And everyone was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, thank you so much, and whatever. So a few months later, he's back at that venue again, and nine o'clock rolls around. And all of a sudden, there's an announcement like, "Hey, just want you to know that there's like a checkpoint down the street." He's like. Wow, that's kind of a weird coincidence. Like two times in a row, I'm here and there's a checkpoint down the street, and it was the opposite direction of where he was going. So the first time he didn't see it, he's like, well, "That's so weird." He goes back a third time, around nine o'clock. They get on the fucking loudspeaker and they say it again. So this time he goes the direction of where the checkpoint supposedly is. There's no checkpoint. What it came down to was there's it's this venue that's a business, but the crazy bitch also lives on property and is tired of people like being there late. What? So she wants to kill the party at like nine o'clock so people will start leaving. Oh, man. And so every wedding that's there gets this announcement at like nine o'clock that there's oh. a checkpoint down the street. I was like, that's horseshit. Look, if you live there and you don't want to have weddings there, then don't fucking have weddings yeah, there. Really? Right. They paid for this. You didn't just do them a favor. Right. That's yeah. Bullshit. Wow. That is bullshit. Like at first, it's like, oh, you guys are so nice. That's awesome. Thanks for warning everybody. It's like, oh, no, you're a bunch of fuckers. So uh, if you're at a wedding, someone announces there's a checkpoint. It may be fake. I'm yeah. gonna go throw check up. Check ways. Yeah, check ways. I'll go throw up in their house. You sh- oh, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, that's right. Excuse me. Can I use your restroom? Checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you say check? <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. God, wedding venues. That's a that's a whole nother crotch talk. <laughs> so tired of that. Uh, let's move on though. Old timey word of the week. Lightning. Lightning. I know you're thinking like I know what lightning is. Mm-hmm. Apparently, back in the day, lightning was another term for gin. Ooh. So you get a glass of lightning, which I think is kind of cool. Drink lightning crap thunder? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drink beer, raise hell. Yeah. Give stunners. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rocky. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of give stunners, like it was, we should say we just celebrated Stone we Cold Day did. a couple days couple ago. Did, yeah. yeah. Fuck. So, yeah, was, that's right. I, I drank a lot of beer in his honor. <laughs> I did. Did you guys you guys hung over from were you hung over for St. Patrick's Day? After? No. I no. wasn't either. I didn't I didn't go crazy. It was a Sunday. Did I. Hit a few beer, breweries, you know. Just mm. had had some beer. Had a fair I mean, I had a good amount of beer, but I wasn't like going crazy. Yeah, so. I felt weird. I had uh Inigrin, um some mm. it, just at, at my house, you know. Nice. And uh I was like, have? well, uh Valkyrie. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I was just kind of feeling like, okay, well, it's a Irish holiday, but I'm drinking German beer <laughs> and I'm Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a triple threat right, right there. It's European. It's fine. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same day as my wedding anniversary, so it's kind of depressed. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just drink yourself into oblivion. Anyway. Yeah, just, yeah. You just. I'm celebrating. Get, get the day over with. Right. <laughs> get this man a beer. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on then. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. 
Our beer babe of the week this week is Miranda, and you can find her on the grams at good news, all one word. Oh, nice. Yeah, no spaces or anything like that. Goddess of beer. Oh, goddess of beer. That's a good name. Yes, it is. Uh, she is drinking. I can't quite tell legitimacy. I can't tell who made that though. So go follow her and find out. The goddess of beer. Go yeah. follow Miranda. It's a bright shirt she's wearing. It was very bright. Yes, blinded me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of green shirt. Speaking of green, I saw some breweries yesterday posting pictures of their or two days ago posting pictures of their green beer for St. Patrick's Day. Which, whatever. I don't need green beer. I didn't drink any green beer. I like my beer to be beer colored, right. beer flavored. Agreed. Some of these looked like disgusting pea soup. <laughs> it, oh, really? It looked like maybe they colored a hazy green or something. Oh, really? It looked horrendous. I never thought about that. It was disgusting. Breweries, we don't need green beer. Wow. People that want green beer want shit beer. That's like a beer science thing. <laughs> but not in a good way. Yeah, that's true. But I, I think it would have been interesting to see. Like, I wonder if that's what happened. Like you said, you turn like a hazy into like a pea soup. Like that's, that's what it looked like. Oh my! It god. looked awful. How weird. Oh god! Please, please don't do that. No. Like, do it to your lightest of beers if you're going to do it. Don't yeah, do if it. If you're to going your... to do it, even then, it's not necessary. Yeah, not your hazy IPA with with uh, lactose in it. That's just disgusting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at one brewery. I won't mention so this person doesn't get in trouble. But I was talking to them. I was like, hey, "Have you been crazy for St. Patrick's Day? Because it was it was a little earlier in the day, and they weren't too busy. They were busy, but not crazy." She's like, no, it's been pretty much like this all day. She goes, you know, I had one guy walk in earlier and go like, yeah, I want a green beer. And she goes like, oh, we're not doing green beer, but, you know, green beer is just beer with food coloring. Happy to pour you anything else we got on on tap here. And she's like, nope, walked out. Really? <laughs> yeah. What an idiot. Yeah. She's like, I'm pretty sure he thought green beer was a style of beer. Yeah. 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 Like he was missing out by not having- special green beer. Yeah. yeah. You know what style it is? It's usually shit beer yeah. with food coloring in it. That's it's what kind of like the to- shamrock shake, you know what I mean? <laughs> Go to, go to his supermarket, like, I want green beer. Where do you sell the green beer? <laughs> yeah, that's an aisle too, dickwad. <laughs> yeah, so that was I thought that was funny. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's get into a little bit of sports talk. And now, the sports, brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. It is indeed, and speaking of cleanuptheglass.com, we alluded to earlier, Dan has a new article up, yes. uh, which we all agree uh, wholeheartedly oh, with. Oh, definitely. Yes. Tell, tell us about your new article. Yeah, basically it was just uh, more kind of me like addressing just how crappy professional basketball is. I think yeah. the week prior, the, the week before on our show, I basically exclaimed half-heartedly that basketball is dead, mm-hmm. and I just kind of went home thinking, yeah, it's pretty much true, it is dead. But the pro is, you know, and I, I just kind of realized, too, with, you know, the Lakers floundering and me not right. really taking interest in any other games anymore. The one guy I, I want to watch every single time he's playing is Zion Williamson for mm-hmm. Duke. And it's just it, it takes me back to when I watched basketball and I just watched the game. I didn't complain about, oh, my God, they're shooting so many threes or they're turning the ball over. They don't take care of the ball. Right. They're not running plays like this guy's just making me watch basketball and enjoy it again. And it just made me think, like, hey, when he gets into the league, this is the only way that he's gonna he's got to save it. Hopefully, so I remember, like, back in the day, if the playoffs were on, it didn't matter what team it was. Yes, I would watch. I mean, unless it was one of those like squash matchups, maybe mm-hmm. not so much. But overall, especially round two and up, I would watch every game if I could. Yeah. And now it's like, I don't know, Lakers aren't in it, of course. Right. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll watch the finals. Maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, up until this year, it's just gonna be Golden State and Cleveland. Uh, yeah. So. Uh yeah I I don't I hardly watch anymore I happened to catch some Lakers action the other night that was embarrassing <laughs> yeah <sighs> what a game LeBron's doing his part yeah making, he really is yeah making sure we get that that, that keep our picks there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I posed the question to some people the other day uh is it time to completely blow up the team and trade LeBron while he's still worth something and bl- before he blows his ACL in December I'm telling you like if uh we find out who gets first pick this year mm-hmm. trade him for Zion yeah so I'm okay. You know Take, and to take our first round pick too, take Lonzo Ball if you want, whatever. Give give up Who? the farm for Zion. Yeah, is he still in the Lakers? <laughs> yeah. As, as far as I'm concerned, nobody's safe except for Kuzma. Yeah, that's even it. then. I, I, everything for Zion, dude. For Zion, I'd, I'd give up everything for Zion. I'd give, I'd give up the farm for Zion. <laughs> give but, magic uh, for Zion. Right yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and I'm sorry, listeners. Not everyone's from LA, <laughs> so we'll stop very briefly here. But uh, I read today that there's rumors that Magic wants Doc to come over. Oh, well. Wow. Coach the Lakers. 
I don't think he's going to move, though. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Nobody wants to die. He's a horrible coach. <laughs> I will say uh, the Clippers, though, have been doing surprisingly well with what little they have for Agreed. whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. It seems like we still have better players with Kuzma and like Ingram at the time before he got blood clots and he ain't Jamaican, <laughs> man. You know, but... uh it, but they're still beating us somehow, and it, I think uh, he's getting a lot out of his players. I, I guess. I agree that we have a hole in the coach's department. Yeah. It's starting to become more and more apparent. A little bit. Um, but Doc is not the answer. Probably not, yeah. We'll probably find a way to bring Austin over, too. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, don't let him GM. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't give him the Phil Jackson deal. Yeah. <laughs> Just bring Phil Jackson back. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. Yeah. Uh, Blake Bortles is going to be signing with the Rams. Back up Jared Goff. Yay! Mm. Huh. They couldn't do any better than Bortles, right? I Tebow mean, not available. I, I guess backup. you just kind of hope that uh, Goff doesn't get hurt. I bet the Rams are hoping that the Goff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, I heard the other day that a castrated ram they call a weather. I think that's right. A weather, a weather, or something weird. I have to Google that. Huh. But there's a name for a castrated ram. I was like, that's what now they Bortles. Yeah, it's like that's <laughs> what they should have called them after the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, shit. LA Weather. The LA Weather's done. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, speaking of football, the Browns have made quite the offseason acquisition so Look far. Look at those Browns. Picking up Odell Beckham Jr., Eric Cush, I just like saying his name, and uh, Kareem Hunt, who will also be suspended the first <laughs> half of the season. Right. Why are we still rewarding these assholes? No shit. <laughs> uh, first of all, you want a guy who's not going to be there for at least half the season, and B, what do you want this PR nightmare for? Yeah. Oh, Kareem Hunt. Yeah. He's on video kicking a woman. Right. I don't know. I think once he rushes for 200 yards in one game, everyone's going to forget. All all is forgiven. Yeah. Problem with society right there. Yeah. It's funny because, uh, you know, when the Chiefs got rid of him, everyone's like, yeah, well, you had to do it. I'm like, no, you didn't have to do it because now all someone's going to do is pick them up and look like a genius. Right. And that's what happened. The Browns picked them up. Everyone's like, wow, look at them. How smart are they? It's like the Chiefs didn't have to get rid of him, really. That's true. You know, they could have just said, hey, well, we doled out the punishment and he's taking it and he's still a part of our team, though. Yeah. You know, because now, like, the Browns, they got, o- o- you know, ODB. ODB, yeah. And now they got, they got, what's his name, that if in that crappy division, they may need him for the playoff push and all of a sudden they're going to look like geniuses if it works out. Yeah, except uh, if if he does anything, if Hunt does anything else to get himself in trouble, right? Then the Browns will look like absolute idiots. Well, that's true, and at so, that point, then you do kind of have to drop him because he probably will be blackballed. Right? I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's a risky move at this point. You're really mm-hmm. rolling the dice. Well, the, the elephant in the room is if he was just some regular Joe walking down the street, people would be screaming that he should be in prison, being annually raped and then murdered. Correct. Mm-hmm. But because this guy's a big superstar, okay, well, let's give him half the season off and then. See what he can do after it's that. It's interesting, right? Hey, man. Let him cool down. Yeah. yeah, go to therapy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not for his signing. I'm conflicted because I'm not saying people can't change, but uh, he's a horrible person. On right. video, he's a kicking terrible a woman. Person. Yeah, yeah, that's awful. And yeah. have we seen have have we seen any evidence that he's gone any kind of therapy or thing? I mean, they did say the I think it was the GM or the owner of the Browns was saying that he is going to therapy. Um, some of it's being provided by the Browns. Some of, of it's outside. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure what he's really in is like PR training camp at this point. Yeah, yeah, so, probably. If you get mad, walk away. Yep. <laughs> Smoke a blunt. We can cover that up. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot easier to, to cover. Uh, by the way, I looked it up. A castrated, castrated male sheep is called a weather. Mm, W-E-T-H-E-R. So uh, the L.A. weathers <laughs> coming through. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh. Good news for Dan's Raiders. Oh, yeah. They picked up Antonio Brown. Isn't that crazy? I didn't see that coming. I didn't either. Of Especially all the places. with all the moves they've been making. I was like, oh, my God. We're like, but where the... else would he go? Right. Well, I'm sure people would say, I'm sure the Browns would take <laughs> <laughs> Bar's real low for the Browns. <laughs> it's interesting. It seems like the Browns are competing with the Raiders for picking up all the. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the trash. All the, yeah. Mm-hmm. All the troublemakers. I yeah, it's interesting what they did, though. I mean, they were able to trade Amari Cooper and a third and fifth round pick for Antonio Brown and a first round pick from Dallas. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's yeah. a hell of a haul if that's you think a, about right. it. Yeah. Gruden coming back around, maybe? No kidding, maybe. Yeah. So, Jesus. This will be their last season in Oakland, right? This upcoming season? Supposedly. Interesting. I, I've heard that it might be two more seasons. Oh, Have oh they even God. started on the new stadium yet? I don't think so. <laughs> really? There'll be two more stadiums then, yeah. or two more seasons then. Remember last time I was in Vegas, it looked like they were kind of setting the groundwork, but I'm not too sure how far they are along in it. Hmm. 
Well, all right, let's go to Vegas. That's right. <laughs> we could Google this, but we Field better trip. go see it for ourselves. Uh, on to basketball. Dirk Nowitzki passes Will Chamberlain into sixth place for the all-time scoring list. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I will say that Will Chamberlain did it in far less games than pretty much everybody. The only right. person he wasn't able to do it uh, quicker than was Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan uh, did it in fewer games than Will Chamberlain did. And Michael Jordan had to deal with defense. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where uh, I mean, Nowitzki did too up until a couple of years ago. Right. So... Uh, what else? Oh, and a little bit of Dodger news. Kershaw will not be uh, starting the season opener. Still having some issues. I kind of figured that. Yeah. Money well spent, Dodgers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. At least we got the good old manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but glad we re-signed him. The, the guy that's replacing him, um, the rookie that was last year. Was oh, phenom- Walker Bueller? Yeah, Bueller is going to replace him. Bueller. Okay. <laughs> and it, it just brings me back because I'm old. It brings me back like 30 years ago right. when Jerry Royce did the, you know, couldn't start and they put a guy named Fernando Valenzuela in there and like, Boom. Damn, damn. Mm. Oh, damn. Yeah. They're going to be real sorry if they replace him and Bueller turns out to be this amazing pitcher and he, Kershaw's done and they just resigned this huge contract. Yeah, no kidding. I'm t- but Bueller did so good last year. Oh, I mean, yeah. As a rookie. He was money. And then they're going to, you know, so good that they're going to put him in the opening day, you know, starting pitcher. I'm good with it. Yeah. It D- Dick Mountain be. looked good last year. Yeah. Keeping him around. <laughs> That's true. Love, love that name, man. Best nickname best in baseball. Best name ever. Dick Mountain. Got to keep Dick Mountain. History around. might repeat itself. Yeah. What, we lose the It'd be world? Bueller mania. Lose Is the it, World Series again? Is that what? Well, that's, yeah. If we make it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, that's enough of uh, sports talk and us talking too much about L.A. Let's yeah. talk a little booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed. Uh, this man should be called a hero. <laughs> He's man, a genius. Yeah. <laughs> man gives up food for Lent will only be drinking beer. That is Bless him. such an amazing loophole he found. Because so so many people give up beer instead, and it's like, why, man? Yeah. Like, you know, why would you do that? And this guy, he's got the right idea. He's like, hey, I'm not giving up beer, but yeah, I got it. I got to support myself. I got to nourish myself somehow. Right. So it, now he's gonna have breakfast beers in the morning. I'm sure. And oh my god, what a genius! Yeah, it's like the uh, bagel bites commercial, but beer in the morning, <laughs> beer in the evening, yeah. beer at supper time. That's yeah. right. Yeah, when beer's all you're eating, you can have beer anytime. That's true. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati man is taking fashion for Lent to a whole new level. His name is Del Hall. He's the director of sales at local brewery 50 West Brewing. Now here's the thing: he's probably getting his beer for free because he works at a brewery. True. But I'm okay with it. Yeah. Me too. He plans to spend Lent fasting using beer as his only calorie intake. Uh, Lent is 46 days long. Traditionally includes 40 days of fasting and six Sundays on which fasting is not practiced. Uh, Hall decided to do something different this year. Instead of giving up fries or social media, decided to take a step back way back. Uh, he says, just like the monks used to do it back in the 1600s, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, it's not necessarily about the weight loss as it is about the challenge of replicating what the monks did. Um, he's going to be doing video documentations on an almost daily basis and just showing the, the change so far. He's about a weekend and he's lost 15 pounds. Wow. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. So, uh, beer's healthy, everyone. I guess so <laughs> we win, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, oh my God. What a good idea. I kind of want to do this, right? Just to lose a couple pounds, like do yeah. it for a week. Apparently you lose 15 pounds. It's one of those things where like, obviously I have a job <laughs> that it, <laughs> it's not at a brewery, so I can't do this. Correct. But I'm half tempted to take a week off of work and see what happens. Yeah. And the other thing is he was saying that uh, ever since starting this, he's like, I've never been able to feel one beer. He's like, one beer is getting me real buzzed. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, I bet. Yeah. No food in you? You have yourself oh, like a man, nice tasty yeah. stout or something? Damn. That's Woo! true. Get yourself a 9%er. Yeah. I'll fuck your day up. I would like to try that, but I kind of feel like food is probably my Achilles heel, man. Yeah. Like, I just love burgers and burritos. Well, he was saying that and... like, the first few days were really hard, and like after a few beers especially, he really wanted Taco Bell. Yeah. Because like, who doesn't want shitty food when they're drunk? That's true. But he said after a week or so, the cravings went away, and it's actually been really easy. Wow. He usually gets hungry around noon, which is when he has his first beer of the day. <laughs> Lucky bastard. Wow. Though I don't know why he wait till noon. I was say, why do you wait so long? Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's waking up at noon. It could be. Yeah. Th- then it's okay. 
Uh, and then he'll just kind of when he when he gets hungry, he'll have a beer. Damn, God, that's that's a great idea. I don't know, man. Sometimes like I'll be at a bar or something, and beer will make me hungry. Like I'll literally like start smelling <laughs> stuff coming up from right. like, their kitchen or whatever. I'm like, oh fuck, now yeah. I don't want to eat that. Well, it's <laughs> like we talked a couple months ago. Like the science behind the drunk munchies is like alcohol makes your brain think you're starving. That's why you get hungry. Fuck. Yeah. So uh, this guy's a genius. I think a week though, maybe I could try it. Yeah, I'm up for a week of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi, boss. I need to take a week off. <laughs> Why? Is something wrong? Well, just something's not quite right. Taking a beercation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love a good beercation. So, anyways, uh, good on you. Can't wait to find out what happens. Hey, and, uh, religious purposes, you know, they gotta. Yeah, they gotta let you go. Beer Hopefully, it doesn't lose too much weight. I mean, you know, I was thinking about that. We started off at like two hundred seventy-six pounds. It's two seventy six. Okay, yeah. he can stand. Something, I, I watched the video and he like weighed in. It was like two seventy six yeah. or something like that. Fifteen like, times four. He's good. Yeah, I was like you, you got some weights to go. There. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's bring this under two hundred. Yeah, do it for yourself, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it for the beer. That's right. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, oh, the Brewers Association unveils the tw- twenty eighteen rankings of top U S. brewing companies. Um, this, if I am not mistaken, is by volume. So like by beer sold. Okay, is, is how they ranked it. Uh yes, sorry my my thing is freezing up here. Oh yeah, no problem. And so, uh, welcome to the list, Modern Times. Cool. They they cracked the top fifty. They're oh, in cool. there at uh, forty five. Other notable mentions: uh, Carl Strauss is still in there, of course. Of course. Yes, they're they're always in there. Twenty first Amendment up in San Francisco, twenty six. Welcome. Yeah. Well, uh, I think they. I can't remember. I think they moved up a couple of spaces. Oh okay. Uh, what else? Deschutes still in there. They're at number 10. Stone at number 9. They dropped one. Oh, it tells me right here. Uh, no, 21st Amendment stayed the same. Uh, Deschutes, number 10, stayed the same. Stone dropped one. They're number 9. Canarchy, which is kind of unfair because that's Oscar Blue, Cigar City, uh, Utah Breweries Co- Cooperative. That was hard to say. Deep Ellum and Three Weavers. It's all of them in one conglomerate. Okay. It's like a, yeah, a collection. There. Yeah, that's not really one brewery. Anyways, they moved up one. They're number 8. Number 7 is Bells. Number 6 is Gambrinus. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, it's Spotzel Brewing, Trumer Brewing, and uh, Bridgeport Brewing. Number five is Duvel, which, once again, not fair because it's Firestone, Boulevard, and Brewery Omegang. Uh, number four, New Belgium. Number three, Sierra Nevada. Number two, Boston Beer. And number one, again, is uh, Yingling and Sun. So a lot of people on social media were going crazy, like Yingling. I fucking hate Yingling. They're they're hardly craft and blah blah. And Boston Beer Company. They're not craft, and and I would never put them on my list of best breweries. You got to remember, people. This is by volumes, by by units sold. No one's judging by their flavor. Okay, get off your fucking high horse. Yeah, slow down. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah, tap the brakes. Yeah, people were going nuts on social media. It's like it's by sold. This is fact. This is not opinion. <sighs> Suck it. It doesn't take a lot for people to get pissed on social media, man. No, yeah. especially the beer nerds. They get crazy. That's right. Oh, God. The Utah, a Utah House committee rejects a bill to increase beer ABV percentages sold in grocery and convenience stores. Uh, it was going to go from 3.2% to 4.8%, and they said, nope, keeping it down to 32 So basically, you can only get like Bud Light in grocery stores. Still. Oh, shit. Yeah. In Utah, right? In Utah. Oh, those poor bastards. Yeah. <laughs> they could use one or two. <laughs> Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago. Anchor Brewing, the employees were going to try and unionize, and they finally held their official vote last week, and they voted to unionize, and now it's up to uh, the parent company, which is Sapporo, to uh, to either accept it or, or deny their claims, and then there'll be a whole process. They wow. want more monies, I guess. Yeah. Uh, West Virginia passes a law to increase beer sales on percentages from 12 to 15%, so you can now buy up to 15% alcohol beers in west virginia good for them i still can't get an 120 minute ipa at that wow that's like 18 yeah, percent. Yeah. yeah oh damn yeah you're right uh pike brewing is going to make a morning after beer and then donate the pro- proceeds of that to planned parenthood <laughs> okay <I was> thinking, <laughs> don't tell me it works now <laughs> If it did, I'd be all over that. <laughs> so wait, before you leave, yeah. <laughs> chug this thing. The lady in front of me be like, Greg, why is there a pallet on our front porch? <laughs> I had to buy a little beer. Yeah. We'll call it reassurance. We'll call it a little uh, insurance. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. If that worked, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> we dry hop it with plan B. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Mm-hmm. That'd be funny. But this is a good thing. Uh, Planned Parenthood is still a good thing. Uh, the Craft Brew Alliance, they own Kona and Widmer and Red Hook, are have established 
what they call PH Experiment. It's a like a spin-off company that's just there to quench your thirst. So they're gonna be making horrible things like hard spritzer water. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard spritzer water is one wow. of the things they're uh, investigating and researching right now. I don't know that that's something that's been high on my demand list. No. Yeah. I have I've yet to uh, seek out hard spritzer water. No. And even as somebody who drinks a lot of LaCroix and has even added some booze to LaCroix, right. I still don't need your hard spritzer. No, thanks. I'll do it myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then speaking of them and Kona, Kona is still keeping the company afloat as Widmer Brothers and Rud. Jesus, Red Hook struggled to make a profit. Uh-oh. Uh, they're up overall 1.3%, even though Windmer and Red Hook, Red, Red Hook, apparently it's a hard word, are uh, <laughs> are down last year. So uh, Kona is growing a lot. It's interesting. People probably on the East Coast are like, oh, it's Hawaii. Yeah. I don't know. So. Maybe that's what's happening. I think that's what most people think. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Craft Brew Alliance is owned, I think, 33% by Budweiser. So remember that. Uh, and all the beer from Kona you get in the mainland has been brewed in the mainland. Right. The only thing that they brew at the brewery is for on island consumption. It's interesting. I, yeah. I don't think that's a uh, a really well known fact. Yeah. I guess part of the problem is it costs way too much to ship mm-hmm. from Hawaii, all the bottles and stuff. So uh, it's just way cheaper to brew out here. The funny thing is, like on their website, it says brewed at the, and it's like five locations across the country, like brewed at these locations under the strict guidelines of brewmaster so-and-so. It's like, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, here's the recipe. Don't fuck up. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. He's out in Hawaii. You think he's really stressing over here? Yeah. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. That's right. <laughs> Surfing. <laughs> High as a kite. Looking, <laughs> <laughs> looking out at the Maui yeah. sky. Give right. me a break, dude. He could give a shit. He's over there cutting up pineapples and yep. just, just hanging out. So, uh, yeah, that's all we got. That's it for us. It's all the news and everything else. Next week, game two of round two. Sierra Nevada's hazy little thing up against Mind Haze from Firestone. Ooh. A lot of people calling it for Firestone early wow. before the tournament even started. Social media is saying Firestone's going to take it all the way. So we'll we'll find out next week. Will their hopes be dashed or will they move on to oh, man. fight another fight? I can't wait. <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. You can find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com, and you can follow us on social media at The Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter, at Unfiltered Gents. Don't forget to leave us a voicemail, especially if you've been drinking. 805-538-BEAR. It's 2337. Uh, I think that's everything from us. So uh, in the meantime, I hope everyone is staying hydrated. Come back for game two around two next week. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.